Hello everybody, I'm Glip and this is lesson about 5G power headroom. Let's get started. Please note, this information just for general purposes. This is not a technical advice. Please use your own official manuals, technical specifications and guidelines. First of all, let's define what is 5G UE power headroom. According to 3GPP, a power headroom, this is the difference between maximum power of user equipment and PUSCH estimated power. So maximum power typically is 23 dB if we're talking about normal uh, regular class of power and estimated UE output power uh, it, it means uh, that a hypothetical power for user equipment which um, uh, could have been used assuming there is no uh, practical real upper limit for uplink transmission. If we look again at this equation, we can see that power headroom can be with negative values indicated that there is no available power in current slot. So in this case, base station may give orders to adjust number of allocated PRB or to reduce modulation encoding scheme to bring up uplink power of uh, UE. And of course, power headroom, it is about active mode. At this slide, graphical representation of power headroom. From the left example, we can see positive values of power headroom is when PUSH transmission does not exceed maximum transmitted output power. In this case, there is enough power for current transmission and uh, base station may even decide to increase modulation coding scheme or to give order for more PRB allocation in uh, uplink direction. In case of negative power headroom uh, reporting, it means that PUSCH estimated power or we can say desired power, hypothetical power of PUSCH exceed maximum output power of user equipment and in this case very probably base station may give command to reduce modulation coding scheme to reduce some uh, radio management uh, features and so on. we will talk about it later as well okay and now let's figure out why power headroom is needed in in the network first of all power headroom values can be used together with buffer status reports and um, sounding reference signals uh, estimation. It is all combined can be used for supporting uplink channel dependent scheduling. The second thing, power headroom can be used to support link adaptation. For example, as I said before, to reduce modulation encoding scheme or number of allocated PRB in order to optimize uplink transmission in order to optimize battery consumption. Power headroom reports even can be used to calculate transmission power commands, which is from base station to, to user equipment. So that commands can also be based on not only uplink, a signal to noise interference ratio, but also power headroom values from user equipment. And of course, power headroom can be used to activate, deactivate different features. For example, when it comes to uplink carrier aggregation, secondary cell carrier aggregation, power headroom values can also be used for activating or deactivating some radio resource management features. For example, when it comes to uplink carrier aggregation, some of them components can be based on a pass loss calculation from power headroom. In that case, base station may give command to release or to add one more carrier component if your user equipment reports good or i mean positive or negative power headroom values also i found information that very likely base station is also take into account power headroom not only buffer status reports when it comes to uh, choosing mimo rank power headroom reports can be used when it comes to uplink triggered mobility this is more about feature but i believe uh, for some vendors it can be true on this slide you can see how a mac control element contains buffer status reports other fields and power headroom report and fields 
along with that data mac control element may also carry cell rnti drx command contention re resolution commands and so on uh, from that point of view from mac layer point of view uh, there is no any specific things which related to power headroom reporting at mac layer now let's look at how 5g power headroom report can be triggered so first of all it can be triggered periodically it's in, it can be transmitted periodically as controlled by its special timer triggers also can be due to change in path loss because of certain threshold in 1 3 or 6 db and trigger can be uh, the same as for buffer status, status report so one more interesting thing is to it is possible to configure prohibit timer to prevent user equipment to send power headroom report too frequent, frequently and by doing that we can reduce uplink signaling load we can reduce uplink interference but a negative side of that is we may also affect in a in a negative way some radio resource management features because power headroom used in uh, uplink carrier aggregation it can be used in some mobility features so that timer should be configured in a very optimal way and with uh, certain precision now let's look at power headroom reports time type number one is when power headroom for PUSCH this is classical this is one of the most common type number two power headroom reports assumed not only transmission for PUSCH but also for PUCCH channel type number three for SRS switching main purpose of that type of reporting is to try to calculate quality of non-PUSCH carrier, another carrier, and if that quality is good enough to reconfigure user equipment to use that new carrier as a PUSCH carrier. Also one more interesting thing about power headroom is uh, maximum power reduction. Uh, maximum power reduction may be increased when you try to transmit data in uplink with uh, high modulation encoding scheme at the edge of uh, spectrum so in this case there is maybe some need to meet specific and more strong out of band emissions requirements so in this case in order to reduce the power at this edge of spectrum power headroom reports can also be used when it comes to beamforming aspects and power headroom I wouldn't say that there is a direct that there is a direct connection because power headroom reports let's say works at Mac layer and beam forming it is mainly about physical layer it is mainly about base station side uh, because base station controls beam forming and uh, in addition power headroom is per carrier as I said before does not link directly to beam based any uh, commands and operations so i wouldn't see any direct correlation between beam forming some aspects and commands and how well beam forming works and power headroom as i said before power headroom can also be used in closed loop power control for power control uh, PUSCH SRS channels. So in particular, transmission power commands, TPC commands from base station, they can be based not only on signal to noise interference ratio, but also power headroom values from UE. In this case, based on these commands, UE may adjust power in closed loop power control with uh, different values at one step. Actually, if you want to know more about power control in uplink, in downlink, uh, you can watch my video about power control in 5G. What also interesting about uh, power control, power headrooms, in some cases, for example, in case of ENDC, in case of FR1 plus FR2 transmission, uh, UE is allowed to have maximum transmission power control at each carrier. So this may be not so good in terms of uh, UE power consumption, but it is definitely very good in terms of uplink coverage because maximum transmission power at each carrier, at, at, at each uh, carrier.
in Apple. Uh, but in other cases, UE must share common power between carriers. And this is the case when several transmitted carriers within one range, for example, within FR1 or within FR2. Uh, this is uh, the same when UE operates in ENDC mode, but both layers related to FR1. So the same thing actually about uh, carrier aggregation, master cell group operation and uh, secondary cell group operation. You have to think about it because in real network, when you will try to analyze power headroom values from your user equipment, uh, you will have to take into account how exactly your ENDC works, how exactly carrier aggregation works, uh, because in case of FR1 plus FR2, maximum transmission power at each carrier. And in case of when you have to share common power between carriers within one uh, frequency range, this will be another story of power headroom values. That's obviously, I think. Well, of course, um, there are some special tables, which you can find in 3GPP, which map actual value and reporting values. In 5G, power headroom actual values comes from minus 32 dB to positive 38 dB. In LT, actually, uh, this is very interesting. In LT, minus 23 dB plus 40 dB. So in LT, a, a little bit different power headroom actual values. Uh, step size, 1 dB for lower reported values and 2 dB for higher values. Of course, in 3GPP specifications, you can find what exactly each power headroom configuration field means. It is well described in 3GPP specification. And now let's briefly talk about some optimization aspects, which I would like to cover. Well, from previous slides, very obviously that it is better to reduce negative values of power headroom as much as possible, yes, because uh, this is the indicator of uh, not so good uplink coverage, interference, overload problems, and so on. One of the possible ways to collect power headroom values, uh, this is not only from uh, drive test, but also it can be done via minimization of drive test feature. This is one of the self-optimized network feature. This is standardized feature in 3GPP. You can find the description. And actually, I've made my video about how MDT works. Also may find it in my channel. And uh, actually, when it comes to MDT, MDT M2 message contains uplink power headroom, which we, uh, we may can consider as very important because it indicates that power headroom is very important because uh, not only a power headroom, but also RSRP, RSRQ data and GPS data may be collected from multiple user equipments in your real net. And at this graph, uh, I want to share with you just example, just a hypothetical example of power headroom distribution before and after optimization. So we can see that number of uh, negative values a little bit reduced after some optimization activities, which was done in net power headroom distribution is also can be used as a metric of uplink coverage. Some more optimization aspects related to power headroom, it related to carrier aggregation in app. So we know that in uplink carrier aggregation, it is usually triggered when buffer status report is positive and power headroom is positive, usually about uh, 3 dB. If you have some problems in a real network environment, with secondary cell activation, there is um, just a little time when you are in carrier aggregation mode and you would like to increase. You should think about uplink coverage problems and you may uh, play with um, uh, some P0 non nominal uh, configuration because P0 nominal PSH values it plays role in uh, power headroom equation. That, of course, uh, should be done very cautiously, uh, should be very optimized uh, because uh, it may affect multiple, mul multiple features in not, not in a good way, let's say so. And also, 
uh, if your network uh, has uh, some user equipment which related to high power, which is more than 23 dBm, there is of obviously more probability that such users will report better power headroom values. They may have a little bit more advantage in terms of uplink coverage, in terms of activation, deactivation, some features. It also should be taken into account. There are some links and references. Uh, of course, this is 3GBP references. There are unfortunately not so many good articles related to real optimization techniques uh, using power headroom reporting. Power headroom and power headroom reporting well described in those 3GPP specifications. Thank you for watching that short lesson. If you like this lesson, you can like and subscribe to my channel for next videos. Goodbye.